Welcome back everyone to another one of these vlog type of things. I don't know, I told people like a long time ago I'd make one of these eventually for my cold brew coffee. Zelda, hi Zelda, hi. You gonna go on the deck, don't you? Yeah, yeah. How come of course when I start talking on this you're, you're all of a sudden excited, huh? But yeah, I've been, oh God, do I even have enough? I hope I have enough. I'm gonna be really upset if I don't have enough. Do I have enough? Okay, good, I have enough. Anyways, we're making some cold brew coffee. We're making it with the Salt Spring Coffee. The West Cokes edition. Oh God, that was, that was French. I know there's probably not a lot of French people in here. But with the Salt Spring West Coast Dark Roast. Honestly, one of my favorite coffees. One sec, I need to let, I wanna let Zelda out. No, go out, clearly. Oh, it's so bright. Every single time, let her out, she goes and gets, she goes and gets a toy. All right, well, let's uh, let's get this started. So yeah, gonna need a couple things. One, use a regular grinder. I have it set at the most coarse setting of them all. I legit used to use this to grind out a crap ton of coffee because the ratio I use is uh, I use, where are they? Yeah, this is the one I want. I use one of these just like little Pyrex pouring dishes. I have no idea. Measuring cups. I use, uh, I use four cups of coffee beans. One second. One second. You get yourself a big bowl too. Yeah, I use four cups of coffee beans. You know, you use this, there's right there, two cups. So like basically two cups of this. I grind it up into this. Like I said, I used to do this. It's gonna feel like using like an AeroPress or something like that. But like, for, for grinding up four cups of coffee, it's too much. So yeah, let's uh, oh God, I don't have anything set up. One second. All right, so now we're good, I think. Oh God, I haven't done one of these type of videos in forever. So I feel a little bit even more goofier doing this than, than hiking, which sounds a little bit weird. But yeah, like I said, we got our dark roast, our salt spring coffee. Obviously where you live, you're probably not gonna be able to get it. But uh, yeah, I, some people like to measure, measure their coffee using like an actual like scale for like a little weight scale. I'm not that, that crazy about it. I've done I've done a couple testings, right? So I, I like to just shake it up, make sure you got the uh, the line at least a little bit covered there. But yeah, I did a couple. I did a couple testings of this. Like I actually sat down. I wrote down how many, like the the ratio of ground coffee beans to to water and to like how long. And so the way I do it is I make a merch mer mer in the li li link below description below. Uh, the way I do it is, I like to grind it up, like I said, four cups, uh, four cups of full beans like this. Grind it up to on the most coarse setting on this, and then I will put it to ten cups of water or five glasses of this to uh, let it sit there for for twenty four hours. So, yeah, that's 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 the way I'm gonna do it. Obviously, when you're doing it, if you find it a bit too too, you know. I guess too concentrated, maybe less time or less beans. You just gotta work it out. This is the way I do it. It's delicious. And uh, this is only gonna be part one. I gotta record everything part two tomorrow. So yeah, pour it in. It's gonna be extremely obnoxiously loud. I'm considering buying a newer coffee bean grinder. I'm too cheap. I'm too cheap. So here we go. It's a little annoying. So yeah, again, this is probably like a very cheap grinder. I know it doesn't really matter because the filter process and everything gets a lot of the, the gunk out and everything. So yeah, it's just, you know, like, let's see, does that, that's the kind of coarseness we strive for here on my, my, my YouTube channel right there. Oh no. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Perfect. So yeah, of course, some people might be a little bit more snobbish, but I like it. All my friends have tried to like it. It's tasty. 
That's all that matters. So we're gonna do this a couple more times and then uh, yeah, we'll get to the water process because I'm not gonna just sit here and record the for, you know, a long time. So yeah, I'll, I'll come back to it once we get to somewhere a little bit more interesting. Let's do it. All that grunt, not even grind build up, just gunk. Don't worry, it all gets submerged under water and we'll just absorb all the water and produce us with delicious. <laughs> okay, nothing happened. Frig. All right, so now we gotta add our five cups. Well, no, 10 cups. Five of these cups. Five of these cups. But five. 10 real cups, 10, 10 of these real cups, but five of these cups. Okay, let's just shut up, let's go. There you go, that's five. Dang it, that's 10 cups of water. So from here on out, now you just kinda wanna make sure that, uh, make sure that all the, the coffee beans, the ground coffee beans are all submerged underwater. So I like to just kinda go around, around the sides, push everything under, give everything like a little bit of a stir. And like I said, this is going to be sitting here at like for for 24 hours, and the time right now is 4:06. So usually to get keep as many coffee beans on, I just try and keep keep it very moving a lot, and then you know I feel like it keeps enough of the coffee beans off. Anyways, so yeah, we're gonna go put this in the fridge for 24 hours. Um, you don't need to stir it that often. I found I usually stir it like once or twice during this entire process, but uh, yeah, it's not it's not that big of an issue because a lot of it, like the coffee beans I find will will eventually like fall to the bottom of the the bowl. And anyways, stir it if you want, stir it if you don't, if it doesn't taste bad or if it doesn't taste good because you didn't stir it, it's not my fault. I'm just saying I stir it like once or twice. That's it. All right, so. Now we have our coffee in the fridge. Now you can leave it on the countertop. It's not gonna go bad or anything like that. I suggest like, typically like, especially for me, I like my, my cold brew during the, the summer. Obviously I don't like drinking a lot of hot beverages during the summer. And then come winter, I like to drink my, my coffee hot. So I usually put it in the fridge so it's like pretty much good to go when, you're, when you filter it and then you get to just have some fresh coffee. But that's uh that's step one we'll come back tomorrow in 24 hours for step two so for now i'm gonna put you back in the fridge and uh yeah we'll we'll see you guys literally tomorrow Goodbye. hello and welcome to another edition of random cooking with andrea and alex Alex said that he's going to teach you guys how to make his cold brew coffee, so I'm going to show you how to make the creamer that I make for his coffee. I'm boring, all I put in mine is milk. Well, cream, cream, have to be specific or Alex just loses his mind. It's very good. Anyway, so we're gonna do his. I forgot to get out the sugar. He can cut it out if he wants to. Y'all can just hang on a sec. Okay, so. The ingredients for this recipe, which I will show you. Okay. So originally, let's get that zoom. All right, originally, the creamer was this, okay? And instead of milk, 
like regular milk, it uses coconut milk, which uh, it was a creamer for me, but it turns out I don't like sweet coffee. So anyways, I just replaced coconut milk with milk for Alex. I used 2% and he likes it. That only made was enough for like one can of coconut milk. So for like one liter of milk, I do these numbers for Alex. This is for, that's like mid-range and that's a little bit sweeter for sweet tooths like Alex. Anyways, it's real easy. All you do is you take the coconut sugar and the water and you cook it on the stove until it becomes syrupy and then you add the rest of it. It's really easy. It doesn't take, it only takes, the longest thing that takes time is just waiting for it to cool so you can put the milk in. So, I'm going to look at my ingredients so I know what the heck I'm doing. So I need 10 tablespoons of coconut sugar. Alright, so you just throw it right into the pot. I guess I could use a three year. That's okay. One, two, ten. There's that. Coconut sugar is a little bit better than regular sugar. Um, it is lower on the glycemic index, I know. I believe there's less carbs per teaspoon. Five grams of carbs per one teaspoon. Anyways, it's good stuff. I like how it tastes. Alex is even kind of a purist and he doesn't. Mind it. Okay, so then for every two tablespoons of coconut sugar, you do one tablespoon of water. So I'm just going to take this to the sink and do five tablespoons of water. Alright, now like it looks goofy, right? It's hard to show you this, but all you do is you just shake it around until all of the, the stuff becomes wet. Five tablespoons is more than enough. There you go, see, so it's all wet. So now you throw it on the stove, you just turn up the heat. I turn it on to high to start, and then I just turn it down once it starts boiling, and all you gotta do is stir it. I just need a whisk, which I don't know what Alex did with them. He always steals my tiny whisk for coffee. So it's disappeared off the face of the planet. That's okay. I have a whisk attachment for my <laughs> for my uh, hand blender, my old one that broke anyways. Hey hun, do you want to stir this? Hey, we'll get the baby in here to cook, eh? Come here. I don't know if you guys can see this on the camera, but it's like the best investment ever. <gasps> oh, I'm sorry. Of course, I put it together. I... I, I started setting it up. He likes to set it up now. He's a big boy, right? Anyways, kitchen helper. Let your babies climb up to the stove and help you cook. I think I'll have to switch to the big one. Oh. Yeah, okay. You just keep stirring, okay? Don't touch the edges. It's hot. Here you go, honey bun. Let me switch ya. There, longer handle. Can you keep stirring for me? Yeah, there you go. And put one hand on the handle. There you go, yeah. And you put one hand on the handle. There you go. And you keep stirring. Keep stirring. No, you don't wanna. Is that? Yeah, milk. Gonna help me pour that in after. Okay, so now it's starting to bubble. You can see. So you can turn it down just a little bit. I mean, you could just do it on high the whole time. What you want it to do is just reduce, right? You're just cooking it to reduce it. You want to keep stirring it so it doesn't burn. Because it'll smell kind of funny. And maybe yeah, taste bad. Mm, mm, mm. I know, right? So it's going to get all bubbly like that. It means it's reducing. So you just, after a few minutes, just check it with a spoon. And see if it comes off syrupy. Let me check that in a second. The more syrupy it is, the... I don't know if it matters. Like, you could technically just throw it in like this and be fine. But I feel like when it's syrupy, it's sort of like... I don't know. Tastes better. I don't know the science. Some sort of cooking science, eh, Cal? Well, yeah, totally. Absolutely, you know. Okay, see it changes color? It's a lot darker. And I'll just throw that spoon in and see that? It's like coating the spoon. That's done. I'm gonna give it another sec. In a couple seconds. Oh, baby left. Yeah, see it's starting to get stuck to the side, so I'm gonna stop, so I don't want to burn on the sides. 
turn off the heat. Okay, now all you gotta do is add vanilla, sea salt, and milk. Do you wanna help me stir it once I get everything in there? Here you go. Hold on to the Okay, you can stir it if you want. Oh, is that your headphones? You'll have to use them later. Okay. This is one and a quarter teaspoon. Oh, hang on, I'll do salt first so I can just use the same spoon. Salt is three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, so I'm being super duper accurate and just being like, boop. That's pink sea, pink sea salt. You're supposed to use like regular sea salt. I don't know if there's a taste difference. I'm too lazy to go and buy some. There you go, a generous teaspoon is about one and a quarter teaspoon, so accurate. And you stir that in, stir, stir, good job. And then you add a little bit of milk before you let it cool. So original recipe is like three to six tablespoons. I'm gonna add, whoo, yeah, we're gonna add milk. I'm gonna add, I normally add half a cup and I think that's eight tablespoons and I have a one and a half here. So is that, let's do some math. One, two, three, four, five-ish of these, okay. One, five, doesn't really matter. It's just, I'm, ooh, sorry. Just try not to be so loud, okay. I think it's all pretty. Gets a little bit lighter brown. Just stir it really good so everything's all incorporated. Boop, there you go. And then put it aside and wait. And we're back. <laughs> and now I've got Alex staring at me so it's even more ugly. Oh, apparently we're not done with that. Come on up, you can help. All right, so it cools faster if you actually take it out of the pot, but I forgot, so that's okay. Anyways, we're gonna pour it into this this lovely jar. It's a quart, which I think is no. I don't know. I don't know. Holds a liter. Well, I don't know how many quarts that is. Okay. It's a big thing. Can you help me pour this? Can you help me pour it? We'll pour it together. Ooh. <laughs> this is dangerous. Alright, here we go. Okay, right, so all you do is pour it into the jar. Well done, sweetie. Thank you very much. And then, you have milk prepared for the beginning of your video. You don't have to go get it. We're just using 2%. If it was me, I'd use table cream because it's more delicious. Want to help me pour it? Oh boy. You got this. I believe in you. Got it? Pour. Yeah. Then you just fill it up as much as you can, which is, ah, just a little bit too high. Okay, so I can't really shake it. We got these nifty mason jar tops. Hard to see what with the light. Nope, that makes it worse. These pop tops, you'll, you'll edit this out, hey? These pop tops, <laughs> these pour spouts, pop tops. These pop top pour spouts, yeah, are $10. But they make it, they're so worth it because then you're not spilling everywhere. These stupid mason jars are amazing, except for when you try to pour things out of them and then it's just like a nightmare. Tighten it a lot because for some reason, if it's not tightened so hard you can't undo it, it will spill. And then you just shake her up <laughs> like that. Please don't drop it. Oh my God, he's going to try. <laughs> you know what, maybe we'll just leave it there. Okay, so anyways, that's it. Delicious homemade creamer. Yummy! <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed cooking with Andrea and Kelly. Have fun learning how to make cold brew. Say bye-bye. You want bye-bye? Bye! -bye. bye.